Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Life Connection Church Online. Thanks for joining us as we continue to figure out this streaming church thing out together. Uh, but hey, we are excited uh, to gather together this morning to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, to be an encouragement to one another and to make our God known to all that are watching this morning. So if you're at home in your living rooms or on your phones or whatever it may be, we'd love it if you just say hi in the comments. If you're a first time guest with us, uh, we'd love it if you just say hi because we want to get to know you. We want to connect with you. Um, and we want to be an encouragement for you. Uh, Psalm 112 says this, says, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. And it goes on to say, He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. So we want to trust in our God this morning, for he is very good to us. The, the song that we're about to sing extols our God's virtues and declares who he is, way maker guiding our steps miracle worker working in ways that, that we don't always understand. Promise keeper, for he has kept his promise for all eternity and he always will. And light in the darkness, he's the one who can all, we can always look to for help and guidance. That is who our God is. So would you pray with me as we turn our hearts and our souls and our minds to him this morning? God of power and mercy, Lord, only with your help can we offer you fitting service and praise. May we live the faith that we profess with our mouths and trust your promise of eternal life. Lord, we ask you to work this morning through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing together.
even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. You are. stop working you never stop you never stop working church would you turn your bibles or your phones or read on the screen with us the section from psalm 112 Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who, dwell, who deals generously and lends who conducts his affairs with justice, for the righteous will never be moved. He will remember forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord.
morning scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 14 verses 25 through 33. Now great crowds accompanied him and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation, is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in, in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So, therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to Life Connection. My name is Jason. I'm one of the pastors here. Really grateful uh, to have you with us this morning. Uh, while we know this isn't ideal uh, to meet uh, digitally, uh, we, we long for the time that we get to gather again corporately. That's it's been my prayer is that there would be this growing hunger within us to meet together, to worship the Lord, to hear um, his uh, uh, scriptures taught, um, and, and to pray together with one another. Uh, uh, Life Connection is one church with two congregations, and so we are grateful in this season to have both Independence and Northeast Kansas City gathering together uh, digitally. Um, if you're a guest with us, uh, we have a digital communication card that we would love for you to fill out. Um, you can click the link uh, that's in the description uh, and fill out that communication card. Let us know how we can best serve you, how we could be praying for you in this time. We know that during this time, there are going to be all kinds of spiritual, physical, financial, emotional needs that arise. And, and we want to do everything we can uh, to serve you, to walk alongside you. So if you'd fill out that communication card, let us know how we we can be praying. We'd love to do that. You can also text in the word guest to the number 816-656-2727 to fill out a digital communication card uh, in that way. And for every first and second time guest uh, who is with us today who fills out that communication card, uh, we want to contribute $5 to the Restoration House of Greater Kansas City. 
Restoration House is a nonprofit, faith-based nonprofit here in the Kansas City area that's working to serve those who are coming out of uh, this, uh, out of sex trafficking who have been rescued from that. Uh, we want to serve our city. So while this is a time where it could really draw us uh, to fear, uh, to pull back, to maybe even begin to hoard and only think about uh, our own, this is an opportunity for us to press in and to serve our city in some real tangible ways. And Restoration House is doing just that. So we partner with them. So if you fill out that community communication card. We would love uh, to, to serve them in that way. And for the rest of us who call Life Connection home, uh, we want to encourage you as you're able to continue uh, to give um, your tithes and offerings to the ministry uh, of the Lord here at Life Connection. Uh, we know that this is a hard time, and we know that um, there are lots of needs in your life. Um, ministry is continuing to happen, and as you're able, uh, the Lord is gracious and kind. Um, and so only as you're able, we would really encourage you to continue uh, giving. You can mail that in. Uh, to the church office. Um, you can use the church center app. Uh, choose the appropriate drop down. Um, you can also text um, to 84321. If you text Northeast, your dollar amount, and Eight two eight four three two one. 84 You can give uh, financially in that way as well and do the same for uh, any gifts that you want to give to independence. So independence, dollar amount, 284321. And then obviously through our website. But this morning, this is our fifth Sunday, and, and during the course of this year, we want to take a specific opportunity to contribute to our mercy ministry. And so again, as needs arise in our community, we want to do everything we can uh, to meet the needs of people within our church and also within our broader community. And so if you'd like to give a gift over and above, uh, you can give in any of those ways uh, through the Church Center app. Just simply uh, choose Benevolence Independence or Benevolence Northeast Kansas City, and those funds will be directed specifically to help meet uh, very tangible needs that we have uh, in our city. And, and really, we've wanted to be a church that serves our community, no strings attached from the very beginning. Uh, and so to that end, we even in Independence have a, a food pantry and a clothes closet. Uh, the clothes closet's uh, operations are suspended at this time uh, until we're able to, to uh, open that back up. But the food pantry will serve on the third Saturday uh, next month. Um, so <clears throat> we want to continue to serve meeting needs in our community. And so we're going to have a drive through uh, food pantry service um, to, that, that you can take part in, that you can help serve, that you can be a recipient of during this time. And we want to just uh, spread the word and encourage our community in that way. And then two final pieces. Um, Kids Co., both in the Northeast and in Independence, uh, is trying to serve our families by pr providing resources uh, and, and different uh, kinds of opportunities throughout the week. And so if you aren't a part of the Northeast Facebook group, you should jump in there. Uh, Parents and Independence, there is the Kids Co. Uh, Independence Facebook group. If you'll get involved in those two Facebook groups, we will be pushing out resources for you to utilize uh, with your children this week. Um, and so that's just a simple way that we can uh, partner with you, serve together. And then finally, students are going to be gathering this evening on a Zoom call, middle school and high school students here in Independence. Um, to uh, take part in an open forum Q&A that we're calling Doubt It. And this is an opportunity, a safe environment where middle school students and high school students in their own environments are able to ask questions that are on their minds related to the Word of God, related to issues of life um, with uh, our volunteers and our leaders there to help answer those questions and direct those students uh, along the way. So what a great opportunity uh, for your students to have something to do uh, this evening, but also to just have some people who care about them immensely just help them think through uh, the matters of life as it uh, relates to the gospel itself. So um, again, we are just so grateful that you're with us. We want to continue to set our minds and our hearts on the things of God. And so to that end, would you join me as I pray? Father, we are so grateful for this time that we have to hear from your word. I pray that you would open our minds and our hearts during this time, that we might be able to focus upon you, that we would have um, 
that we would have our affections turn towards Jesus, that you would work in such a tremendous way that, that you draw us into a life-giving relationship with yourself and you help us to grow in that relationship as your disciples. We are so grateful and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here at Life Connection, uh, specifically serving out in the Northeast uh, KC area. I told my sons that I'd give them a shout out. So what's up, guys? I hope uh, you're letting mommy watch this this morning. Um, we are uh, this morning, as we read earlier, in Luke 14. We're in our third week of a series called uh, Conversations with Jesus. And the hope in this series, it's to be able to look in on things that Jesus has been saying to his disciples and this morning to the crowds in hopes that we can learn from him and, and grow in, in being disciples of Jesus ourselves. And so I know right now because of the rush uh, at the stores and because of all the, the chaos and, and some of the fears going on with the virus that we become more and more aware of kind of what's a perk what's really necessary. I know we have, like, like what's the name brand stuff that we really need, or, or maybe what's the off-brand stuff that's just good enough. Like, maybe you don't need Charmin. You'll do the always save single ply for a little while, or, or maybe you don't need, like, uh, you know, maybe you don't need Smacks, but you'll take the box that says Sweet and Puffs cereal on it, like, something like that. Um, however, I do feel like there are moments at least for our home, where my wife and I feel like we have to treat ourselves. Like we're getting so used to just taking what we can get that we're, we're getting to this place where we have to treat ourselves. So last Friday, uh, my wife and I had the chance just to hang out, the two of us, um, and no kids. And believe it or not, we chose it for our dinner, pizza. I, I know it's such a kid's meal. Uh, and by the way, like we, we eat a ton of pizza already. Like we, we probably put some of the Pizza Hut employees' kids through college on the amount of that stuff we eat. Um, but we wanted pizza, but we didn't want pizza as, as good as that might be. We wanted something really good. And so we, like, we churned out the cash for Minsky's because we needed to feel a little normal. We needed to feel like we weren't hedging this moment. And so, you know, maybe there are a ton of other options, but at that moment, it was worth the extra cost. For us, it was worth the extra cost just to have something that felt like a perk, like a treat to us. And the best things usually come like that. They usually come with a bigger price. They usually feel like perks. They're, and they're usually worth the price, though. Yeah, we can get by with something cheaper. We can get by with something that's not as high quality. But rarely do they fulfill the craving of the brand name stuff that we might like. Sometimes we need to pay the higher price because it's just worth it. And, and I think about that as we look at this passage in Luke 14, verses 25 through 33. Because that's essentially what Jesus is saying to this crowd. He's speaking to the crowds, as you see in verse 25, and they've been following him for a while already because he's a healer, he's a miracle worker, he's this great teacher, and he also happens to be very kind and compassionate. And he just told this parable that we went over last week about how all of these social outcasts and unclean, all these people that the religious establishment at that time were pushing to the fringes, they were the ones that were going to be invited into the kingdom. They were the ones invited to the feast. And so what's not to like about Jesus? But as much as they may like Jesus, Jesus knows something. Not all of them have really bought in. He knows that things are going to get rough. And he knows that a lot of the people in that crowd are going to feel the urge to move on and find another, what we would call, off-brand teacher. Someone else to follow. Someone else who isn't as risky. Someone else who doesn't cost as much. And, and maybe, yeah, they, they're not as fulfilling as Jesus. Maybe their teaching is on a le lower playing field. Or, or maybe their cravings for amazement and compassion, they're not as met, met as much as with Jesus. But at least this way... I'm not in danger. I'm not, I'm not having to pay the high cost. And he doesn't want them to do that. That would be a tragedy to Jesus. So that's why he stops here. He turns around and he says these difficult things. He wants this crowd and he wants us, you and I, to take a moment 
and understand what the cost will be to follow him. And then to mentally decide, okay, I'm, I'm willing to do that. He doesn't want us to wait until trouble comes for us to make this decision. He wants us to go in with eyes open, knowing that trouble will come, and yet we've already made the decision that no matter what happens, I'm sticking with Jesus. So the question he's putting to them right now is, are you willing to follow me no matter what happens? Are you going to love me more than anything else in your life? Because this morning what we'll see is that it's only when you love Jesus more than anything that you will follow him anywhere. That it's only when you love Jesus more than anything that you will follow him anywhere. And so as we walk through this passage, we're going to see two things that Jesus tells us about this type of love. The first thing we're going to see is that it's a complete devotion to him. And then secondly, we're going to see how this is a thoughtful decision. But first, let's look together and we're going to see first how this is an act of complete devotion. That's what Jesus is calling us to this morning, an act of complete devotion. So look with me again, if you have your Bibles open at home or, or your Bible app out, verses 25 through 27. Actually, verse 25 and 26. Because there are three things that Jesus is going to specifically pinpoint that we need to love him more than these things. So let's look at verses 25 through 26. Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. This first thing that Jesus says we have to love him more than is we have to love him more than our own relationships. And, and the word he uses there is hate. Like, that's a strong word, isn't it? Like, what do you mean by hate, Jesus? What Jesus is doing here is he's doing something that a lot of rabbis did at that time. He's using a very strong word to bring home a point. And the point is, is not that we should hate our mothers and fathers because then we would be dishonoring them. And that would be a disobeying of the fifth command. So it's not we hate our parents and we disown them and we dishonor them. That's, that can't be what Jesus is meaning here. And it's also, we can't go and say, well, Jesus is telling us to disown, disrespect our husband or our wives or our children. Because once again, Jesus would say in Matthew 19 and in other places that we are to love our spouse. Paul in Ephesians 5 would say that a wife and a husband are supposed to love one another, serve one another like Christ in the church. So that can't be what he means. And more so, Jesus would say in John 13 that we are to be known as disciples by our love for one another. So Jesus can't mean hate in the sense of we're not loving people. Once again, he's using this kind of rabbinic, rabbinical language of using hate as a way to saying you should love them less than you love me. That whenever there becomes this friction between you and your relationships and the people you love and you're having to choose whether to obey Jesus and follow his commands and honor him, that you would side with Jesus even if it causes some frustration in these other relationships. He wants that kind of allegiance. Jesus is saying, I want you to love me more than you love other people. So that's the first thing he's calling us to is that we would be completely devoted to him over and above our relationships. But then secondly, he says, I want you to be completely devoted to me even over and above yourself. Look at verse, look at the end of verse 26 again. Verse 27. If you do not hate even your own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Jesus is calling us to bear our cross. And, and I think growing up, for me at least, like this idea of bearing my cross was more of like dealing with the difficulties and suffering of my life. Like, you know, this is hard for me in this season, but this is just my cross to bear kind of thing. And while I don't think that's absolutely untrue, the cross is one of suffering, I think more than that, Jesus is talking about death because the cross is an instrument of execution. And so Jesus is calling us 
to face our mortality, knowing that we will die, to be sober-minded about that and say, no matter what happens, I'm still following Jesus. Even if this turns out in the worst case for me, I'm not going to stop following Jesus. And this might be just not even your own physical life. I think Jesus is telling, telling us to even be willing to kill the dreams that we have for ourselves. That the goals that we have in our lives right now may not match up with the goal or the purposes that Jesus has for us. And that when those come into conflict, we're willing in that moment to go, okay, I don't know where you're taking me, but I'm going to trust you more. That is extremely difficult But that's what Jesus is calling us to. And then there's this third thing that Jesus is calling us to. And it's actually down in verse 33. And Jesus is calling us to love him more than we love our possessions. Verse 33. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Jesus is saying you should be willing to say goodbye to the things you own, to your creature comforts. And I think that out of the three of these, this one might be the one that's the sneakiest, that's, a, that's the most difficult. Like out of the three of these on paper, I'm like, all right, I could do that. But, but really, if I'm honest, I am, I'm really used to my comforts. So I remember it made me think back on this night where the power went out. And I sleep with the box fan on because I like the white noise. And I actually woke up because it was dead silent. And I was like, well, this is a, you know, a lot of people sleep like this. Like, that's in my head. Like, a lot of people sleep like this. I'll be fine. And after 20 minutes of not being able to go to sleep, I'm praying that God will let the power come back on. Letting go of our comfort. Letting go of those things that we're used to and, and that we kind of run, run our life right now. Like, even gathering on a Sunday morning, things like that. We got to hold them loosely. Because Jesus might call us to leave those things. Indeed, some of us might even know missionaries right now who have embraced that call and left their comforts here to go share the gospel elsewhere. We have to love Jesus more than our comforts because it's only when you love Jesus more than anything that you'll be willing to follow him anywhere. Jesus is calling for a decision of complete devotion to him. And, and this is the second thing that we need to understand. And this is what he shows us in the parables. That this isn't just, that this is a complete devotion to him that is made out of a thoughtful decision. It's a thoughtful decision. Look at verses 29, uh, starting in verse 29 again. Let's look at those parables real quick. Actually, verse 28. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. In both of these parables, Jesus is coming to the same conclusion. You've got to count the cost. And in both of these parables, the person he's talking about sits down and deliberates whether or not they're able to follow through on their commitment. So So Jesus is saying that a decision to follow him isn't merely an emotional decision made in the moment. Like, I can't tell you how many times growing up in my church that I felt this pull, just as I am, is playing in the background, the preacher is making his appeal, I know that I'm sinful, and and I get up, and like nine times over the course of my life, I got saved. But every time was an emotional pull. There was no mental decision that understood what Jesus was actually asking me for. Like the crowds, I thought Jesus was really neat, I thought he could make my life better. But I didn't understand what he was asking me of as a disciple, that he wanted me to love him more than anything else. I thought he was a good option, a side piece to my life. 
And what Jesus is wanting you to consider this morning, wanting each of us to consider, is to sit down and go, okay, make a decision, a thoughtful decision. Can you follow through in following me? And here's why we need to make that, make that decision. Because these experiences will happen. We will experience tension in our relationships in following Jesus. We will experience this tension within us over whether I should give up my comfort, whether I should be generous with my things, versus whether I should hoard and keep to myself and self-preserve. We will feel the tension to give up on our dreams of what we want to do in life in order to follow Jesus where he wants to take us. I think a lot of times when we fall, a lot of times maybe, I know at least with me, maybe this is where you're at or you've experienced this. I follow Jesus and I hear all the warnings throughout the New Testament that following Jesus means trials and sufferings. And I go, okay, I understand that. I just hope I never have to do that. I just hope I never come to that pressure point in my life. That is a pipe dream. To follow Jesus means you will experience tension in all three of these areas that Jesus has outlined. And the question that is asked of you right now is are you committed to following Jesus even through that tension? To even letting him guide you through how to handle those situations? And and just because it's a decision you're making, like that can take some of the for lack of a better word, romance out of following Jesus, can it? Like maybe it's more intellectual. Like I just want to follow Jesus because I love him. And, and we want you to love him, but love is more than just romantic feelings. The height of love is not that I feel this romantic longing for you or I want to get like because I'm emotionally tied to you. True love, the highest love that we see in the Bible is a love of choice. That I'm willing to sacrifice for you. And I'm willing to choose to do that over and over again. And so I think, in my mind, what Jesus is doing is a lot of times what, what maybe the, the analogy that comes to my mind is premarital counseling. Like you don't enter into premarital counseling because you want to fall in love with the person you're going to marry. You enter into that because you want to know that you're making the wisest decision and, what, and you're wanting to know what does it take to actually have a great marriage. Jesus is calling us to sit and deliberate and go, okay, am I willing to follow through in following Jesus in all of these ways? Because it's only when you love Jesus more than anything that you'll follow him anywhere. And listen, this isn't the first time in the Bible that God has asked this of us. If anything, Jesus is just reiterating what God has already laid out in the Old Testament. For instance, in in Exodus chapter 20, verses 2 and 3, God, after freeing the Israelites from slavery, brings them to Mount Sinai. And this is the very first commandment of the Ten Commandments. He says to them, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Or Deuteronomy chapter 6, right before they're about to go into the land that God has promised them, that he's brought them to, he reiterates through Moses that in Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. That's what Jesus is asking of us, that we look at him and say, I will have no other gods but you. I will love you with all of my heart and all of my soul and all of my might. And we need to take Jesus' words seriously because even though God appeared to the Israelites and even though there's a lot of people witnessing Jesus in these crowds, there are still a a lot of stories in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, of people who followed Jesus but then rejected him. And the reason for that is that you and I are prone to love something else. We are prone to something called idolatry. Now, when I talk about idolatry, I'm not talking about merely bowing down to a metal statue or a gold emblem. I'm talking about the idea of you loving something more than you love God. 
And so I want you to imagine that there's a, thr- a throne on, on the inside of your heart. And there's a banner over that throne that says, the thing I love the most. And that throne is never not empty. There's always something on it. And so even though you may not be bowing down to a metal idol in order to get, you know, the harvest this, this fall, or just because you're not worshiping another God in order to have a large family like the Israelites were doing, there are still things we worship that we long for, that we desire, because we want them to give us those things. We want them to pro- give us prosperity. We want them to give us comfort. We want them to give us control or peace or satisfaction. And so what happens is we end up pushing God off of the throne that he was created, that he created us within us to sit on. God created you and I to have God at the center of our lives, to be the one on the throne, the thing that we love the most as as we've read. But all, every day we have the temptation to kick him right back off. And to put this false love back on. And here's, here's the thing with that. Every false love outside of God also comes with great fear. And that great fear, and it's a fear of loss. And that great fear of loss primes us to hurt and sin against other people. So for instance, maybe your main love in life is that you are at you are comfortable and at ease, and that life just goes easy for you. And if that's true, then one of your greatest fears was that, is that you'll be overburdened with things that stress you out. And so what you might do is you might end up pushing your responsibilities, the things you don't want to do, onto other people and overwhelming them so that you're not overwhelmed. And so even those you love all of a sudden are overburdened with things that you don't want to do because you don't find yourself comfortable doing them. Or maybe it's not that you want comfort. Maybe it's just that you want to feel loved. You want to feel accepted. So what, what that means is that your greatest fear might be that you get rejected by others. So what you do is you end up smothering and overwhelming people in hopes that they'll return even a fraction of the affection you're showing them. Well, at the same time, you, you kind of do this ballet where you're keeping them at an arm's distance because you don't want them to know the bad things in you because you don't want to be rejected. Or maybe at this time, it's the, it's the fear that you're going to lose control. There's chaos all around us. The numbers are rising every day. There seems like every other day, new laws and new restrictions, and you just want some semblance of control. So what you do is you begin to relate to those in your life with a very heavy hand. You become overbearing or argumentative, shaming or manipulating just to get your way, just so you can feel like you have control at that moment. I mean, we could keep going on and on with this. Whenever we love something more than we love God, it will bring with it a fear that we're going to lose it. And that fear will lead us to hurting and sin against, sinning against one another. And what that means is that Jesus calling us to love him more than we love those other things is actually a very gracious thing. Because it frees us up to actually love people well. We want to love our parents. We want to love our wives and our husbands and our children. We want to love our brothers and sisters. But you can't do that properly if they are the center of the universe for you. You'll put way too much pressure on them. And you'll either crush them or they will crush you because they can't meet those expectations. God is the only one capable of being God. Because he is the only being in the universe that you can completely love, can be completely open with, and never fear that you'll lose him. On one hand, he alone is eternal. He's not going anywhere. But secondly, he is completely devoted and committed to you and your good. See, in the Old Testament, 
when the Israelites broke the commandments of God, when they worshiped other gods, what they would have to do is they would have to go to the temple or to the tabernacle and they'd have to sacrifice an animal on the altar to cover their sins, to make them clean again. But what God has done for us in Christ is out of love for us, He has come for us to be that sacrifice that you and I who have never loved God properly, who have never really placed him on the throne of our hearts properly, out of love for us, even when we didn't love him, he sent his son to be a sacrifice for us. That we might be forgiven of our sins and brought back into the fold, into the family of God. Jesus has walked this path before us. And he's calling us, when he's calling us to renounce all these things, he's really calling us to just follow him down the path that he's already made. As the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2, verses 5 through 9, he actually commands them to have this kind of mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Even Jesus out of his own mouth says in Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 43, he says, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus has come out of a love for the Father and a devotion to us to take away our sin and our shame, to take away all of those things, all of those ways in which we have rejected him and rebelled against God and to take the punishment for that rebellion on himself so that you and I, through his death and then through his resurrection, can not only be forgiven, but have a new life. Jesus is calling us to come and give our lives to him because he has already given his life for us. In doing this, we're actually living a Christ-like life because we are imitating Jesus in his sacrificial love for us. You don't have to be afraid of ever losing Jesus because he finds out something new about you. You are fully known and yet you are fully loved. And you don't have to worry that somehow God's going to let you slip through your fingers and and at this time you're not going to get what you need to survive. After all, as Paul says in Romans 8, if he has given us his son, why should we be afraid that he will not also give to us all the other things we need? How cruel of God to do that. And our God is not cruel. Our God is a kind and compassionate God who loves us. And so when we love Jesus more than anything, when we respond to that love, it empowers us then to follow him anywhere because we could trust him. And people who trust Jesus like this, man, they are a light in the darkness. They are people who will be willing to speak truth and love to those around them because they're not afraid that that truth will ruin the relationship. Maybe it will create a distance. Maybe it will create a gap. But because of your love for those people in your life, you're willing to say true things to them that they may not be willing to hear in the moment. Because you love them and because you're willing to follow Jesus anywhere. People who love Jesus like this become people who are extremely generous. I know right now at this time, all of us, we're feeling the the squeeze of our finances and and of our possessions. But even in this, in loving Jesus, we can trust him that he will take care of us. And so that frees us to continue to be generous, to continue to give, as Jason said earlier, what we can in this moment, hoping and praying that God will use that to honor and glorify his name. People who love Jesus like this become people who are willing to risk their lives for the sake of the gospel and for others. 
I mean, throughout church history, it's been moments like this where sickness and disease has ravaged the world, where the world in fear has pulled back and God's church has pressed in that God has brought revival. Could it be that this is a moment where out of our love for Jesus, willing to follow him anywhere, that God could not only spark a deeper love within us for Christ, but actually use us to spark awakening and revival in our, in our city and beyond? Jesus is wanting each of us out of a deep love for him to stop being scared of death. To be able to look death in the eye and say, you don't get to dictate how I live anymore. Because we love Jesus more than anything, you're willing to follow Jesus anywhere. So some next steps this morning. The first thing I want to ask you to do is examine your heart. Whether you're not a believer in Christ, you're just tuning in, maybe somebody invited you, or maybe you're just curious, or maybe you're someone who's been a follower of Jesus for decades. The reality is, every single one listening to this struggles on the daily to replace Christ with something else, to love something more than Jesus. So examine your heart. What relationships, what dreams, what possessions in your life right now, if you were to lose them, would create the greatest friction between you and God? And, and knowing that, examining that, take Jesus seriously now and sit and deliberate. All right, am I willing to pay the cost if that happens? And maybe some of you this, mo- this morning been coming to church, you've been following Jesus for a long time, you realize there are some things in my life that if I were to lose them now, they might be a game changer. May I encourage you to pray the prayer that we find one man praying to Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. That we Pray the prayer knowing and asking, God, I don't want to be the person who only gets halfway through the tower and then backs out. I don't want to be the guy who gets my army together and then gets afraid and backs down. I think there's great honor in a prayer like that that admits our weaknesses and asks God to be our strength. Because that's what's real. It's what's true about us. And God is a God who loves to help those who know they're weak. So after examining your heart, confessing your idols, rest in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he is faithful, that he is devoted to you, that he has chosen to come and save you. And had nothing changed his mind. And nothing will ever change his mind in that regard. Rest in him. And then third, I would encourage you who are watching this to check in. Check in with one another. Uh, I know if you're like me, maybe you're a part of a gospel community, which is a small group at our church. Check in with those who are in your gospel community, or maybe you're in a growth group, which is our discipleship huddle in our church. Maybe you check in with those in a growth group. One of the things I've become aware of in this last week is isolating like we have right now is actually a, a hotbed, is fertile soil for sin to just continue to develop in us. It's hard to hide. I actually read an article earlier this week about how porn companies are hoping that all this isolation actually leads to uh, higher sales. So check in with one another. Just be willing to ask the hard questions. And if someone asks you that hard question and you need to confess something, be willing, trusting Jesus, loving him more than you love your own pride, loving him more than you love saving face, follow him into confession. And then lastly, reach out this week. We're a couple of weeks away from Easter. On April 10th, there will be the Good Friday service where we take a moment to remember the sacrifice of Jesus as he hung on the cross bearing the weight of our sins. 
we're going to actually live stream our Good Friday service at 6.30 p.m. on Friday night, April 10th. What if you reached out to that one person that you've been praying for? Reach out to one person that, that you want to be with you and stream with you just to invite them to, to watch that with you. And to do that again for Easter, two days later on April 12th. Be willing to, to take that small step right now to just send the link over. You see, small decisions that showcase that we are willing, that we love Jesus more than anything and we're willing to follow him wherever he takes us. We have a great opportunity as a church, great opportunity as disciples of Christ at this time to showcase to the world the great value of Jesus Christ. So let's examine those idols in our hearts, repent of them, And then come out of it stronger and more in love with Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I'm grateful for your word. Father, I'm grateful for just the challenge that you give us this morning. Father, we know that in our hearts we are prone to wander from you. That we are prone to replace you with with other weaker false loves. This morning, Lord, even as we're watching this, even as there may be chaos around us with kids playing on the floor or in the other room, even as some of us may be distracted by by other sites online, Lord, may your word, may your call to us this morning through the words of Jesus creep down into our souls and our hearts and begin to challenge and change us. May this week you reveal to us those idols, those false loves that we are tempted to replace you with over and over again. And Father, may we have the boldness to say to those things, you will no longer dictate how I live. May we come to find you who is gracious and merciful in our time of need. Strengthen us now. Give us boldness by your spirit to live according to your word. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, with 
us to take a moment now this morning to ask our God for forgiveness when we too quickly count the cost of following him instead of being willing to, willing to rely on Christ's power and glory and love is fully sufficient. To, to ask for forgiveness when we too quickly forget that Christ gave up all and we must turn from um, ourselves and our comfort and our wealth and our control and turn to the everlasting strength that only comes through Jesus Christ. So would you take a, a moment now and, and confess to the Lord, ask for forgiveness when you have been unwilling to turn from yourself and what you have and towards Jesus Christ as his disciple. last song that, that we want to sing together is, uh, is Is He Worthy? And it, it goes a few different ways. And often um, we sing a line together um, and then we reply affirming what we're saying. And so as we do that, I would encourage you at home to sing out He is and it is and, it, he, he, and he does because our God wants to hear us tell him that, that we trust him for it. And, and parents, you in your room, your kids need to hear you tell your God that you trust him for it. So if you don't know the song, it goes, uh, Do you feel the world is broken? And then you sing, we do. And then do you feel the shadows deepen? And you say, we do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. We do. Broken, we do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? creation groaning it is it is it's a new creation coming it is it is it's the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst it is is it good that we Bye. 
Father truly loves He does Does the Spirit move among us He does And does Jesus our beside Forever those He loves He does Does our God intend to dwell again Father, would we turn to you in all things? Would we recognize your power, Lord, not our own? Your provision, Lord, not that of the world. Your leadership and not our own. God, we praise you that, that you are. You always have been. You always will be. That we can rely on your promise to us in and through all struggles and pain and questions and confusion. Heavenly Father, you are good. Please remind us of that day. Amen. Hey, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, before you close your window, uh, one last thing about Easter. Check this out. Once again, just thank you for joining us for this live stream. Uh, we really appreciate you giving your time this morning. A couple of things before we, we close out is, first, there are uh, Good Friday services coming up in a couple of weeks. April 10th, we will live stream it at 6.30 p.m. on the Life, Co Life Connection KC Facebook page. Uh, we would love for you to join us for that. And then also feel free to share that link with anyone and everyone that you find. Uh, that they're also welcome to join us for that. And then a few days later, on April 12th, we will have our Easter service. Once again, 10 a.m., live stream on the Facebook page. We would love for you to use this as an easy opportunity to maybe just share the link with someone, someone specific that you would love to just join you for that. Um, I wanted just to say thank you for joining us. And I, 
I hope that this week, this coming week, uh, you can do those things in your life that help foster this deeper love for Jesus. Because it's when you love him more than anything that you'll be willing to follow him anywhere. Thank you for being with us. Have a great Sunday.